welcome to your Saturday a painting workshop with Smudge. My name is Paige and I'm going to be taking you through how to do our beautiful bicycle masterpiece. It's had many names in our binder. It was called Bountiful Bicycle and then I think I just called it Bike Ride when we um, registered for it online. So I'm going to turn on my music a bit. Um, so I don't know, if you have a really great name for it, let me know because it needs a really great name. But either way, it's a really pretty masterpiece. So I was going through the steps of this masterpiece and I do believe that this will take us just a little bit over an hour. Um, I'm hoping, I think, I think it'll take us just a little bit over an hour. And you've probably noticed that there are tons of lines on this masterpiece, tons of lines. So on mine, I missed a whole bunch of them and there's actually a line down here that I don't even know what it is, it was on the outline. But if you guys just want to take a look at the reference in the chat uh, with the outlines that you have on your canvas, and I guess one, make sure that you that all the lines are there, and if not, just sketch them in with a pencil. And the other thing too is you can paint over any lines that you don't want. Like I think there's a bar here. I'm just going to paint right over top of it because, I don't know, I think it's too much. Um, so if there's anything that you want to paint over, feel free to do that. So on that note, we'll talk a little bit about what you should have in front of you. So you should have your outlined canvas or a canvas. Um, you should have at least three sizes of brushes. I'm going to use a one inch brush, a half inch brush, and then a small brush just for some detail lines um, at the very, very end. You should also have your jar of water. Um, and I have my paint puck that doesn't want to stick to the bottom anymore. And I do tend to use warm water. You don't have to, that's entirely up to you. And you should have paper towel for sure. This will be your best friend. Your sink will love you for using paper towel. So you always want to remember to wipe your brush before you rinse it and wipe your brush after you rinse it. So again, we don't want to get paint in our water and we don't want to get water on our canvas. So uh, the paper towel becomes your best friend. And you should have a whole bunch of colors, whatever colors you want in your masterpiece. So when we do this masterpiece, we are going to start with the background. My background this time is going to be um, a light cream. I'm going to try anyway. And then you need a color for your bicycle. Um, my bicycle is going to be pink, so I'm just going to mix some red and some white together. You should also have some black if that's what you want to use for your tires and your seat. And of course your handlebars as well. Your uh, basket in the sample, it is brown. However, you can use whatever color you want. I'm going to do gray. You also will want some green and whatever color you want your flowers to be. So I know that they're not in here. We're going to paint that in as we go along. Don't worry, I have 100% faith in you. You will do just fine. So on that note, we should probably get started. So we're gonna start with a really big brush, our one inch brush. And we are going to, I'm just going to put that, we are going to, um, oh, I forgot my paper plate for my palette. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. So I'm just going to make cream. And you have painted with me before, so you know that I like to do a messy background. But what's really neat about this is that you can make your background however you want by simply using your brush stroke. So in this sample, um, so the sample was done by CJ. And she would have taken her brush, sorry, I'm just gonna wet this a little bit. She would have taken her brush and she would have double dipped in the colors, in her two colors. And she would have done almost like a, a cross hatch strokes throughout her masterpiece to just kind of give it um, just a little bit of a pattern. So if that's something that you wanna do, you can do that. However, this time I'm gonna be I don't want to say boring, boring, but I'm just going to do vertical strokes going up and down. So I'm going to get some white on my brush and some yellow on my brush. And we'll just start, actually, you know what, artist, sorry, I'm just going to adjust here. Let's actually start in our bottom left-hand corner um, and then work our way around our bike first, just because I do want to give it a little bit of time for that to dry. Don't worry if you go over top of your lines so much because we always paint in an order that we can then paint over top if we make any oopses or mistakes. The other thing you'll want to remember is to paint the sides of your canvas. 
So I'm just going to do horizontal strokes throughout all these little tiny parts here. I hope you can see that okay, but this is basically inside the bicycle wheel. This is inside the bicycle seat and the fender. Um, in here, I said I was going to paint over top those lines because I didn't like them. Although now that I see that I'm doing cream, I think it's going to show through. And so you always want to make sure that you have enough paint on your brush that your brush is gliding, but not so much paint that it's goopy. Um, the goopiness will hinder how quickly it dries. And because we want to be able to paint around our bike fairly soon here, or paint on our bike, I should say, we want that to dry. There is really no rhyme or reason to the order that I'm painting in other than I know that I want to give time for around my bicycle to dry. So I'm just double dipping into my yellow and my white. And the nice thing about using a light color like this is it should paint over fairly easily. So anywhere that you know that you're going to have black, such as your, your tires here, um, you'll be fine to go over top of those lines a bit. My cream is turning out a lot more yellow than I thought. And also, so you know, acrylic paint always dries darker than how you see it. Sorry, I'm just going to smudge these while they're wet. Um, so if it is already too dark for you, it is going to darken up once it dries. So just kind of keep that in mind. Artists, don't worry about how it looks too much right now. All of that detail is going to come in as we add our other layers and our colors. Right now, we just want to fill in our background. So I'm just painting around my bike first. My yellow is turning my cream is turning out to be quite yellow, but that's okay. I think it's going to look really neat anyway. All right. So I'm pretty much done around my bike. I'm not going to come back and do a second coat on this. So you want to make sure all of your canvas spots are filled in, yes, even around your basket here. Maybe you want to even go down the side here. It depends how close you get your basket to your bike. And because we're painting in this order, you can paint right over top of it. All right, I just have the top left corner to do now. And again, artists just spread out that paint so that it doesn't take too long to dry. That's what I love about acrylic paint is it dries fairly quickly. So if you do make an oops or a mistake, you can paint over top of it fairly soon. Whereas with oil paints, you literally have to wait days before you can really do anything with it. I used to do oil paints many, many years ago and um, just found them, I mean, I love the thickness of them and the texture, but I just found it to be very um, unforgiving. Um, it took a little bit too much patience for me. I like to, uh, when I'm in a zone, I like to get my paintings out rather than having to wait days to come back to them. All right, my background is done. Um, now would be a good time to go around and just do the sides of your canvas. And if you have it on an easel, don't paint the top and the bottom yet. Wait until the end. But if it's just on your table, then you can go ahead and paint the top and bottom as well. But you might as well do that while you have your background color on your brush. So I have to tell you about my cat because, of course, I always talk about my cats. So we have a pocket door in our kitchen that leads to our pantry. And um, 
Yeah, she's learned how to open the door, so she's doing that right now. She's so bad. And of course, I can't give her heck because I'm <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> I think she knows, right? She's like, hey, I can get in here now. I won't get in trouble. All right, I think that's pretty good for my background. I'm gonna give you guys a few moments to finish up yours. Um, if you can't see my canvas very well or if the view just isn't that great, please let me know and I'll just adjust accordingly. However, when you are done your background, you do want to take your brush, wipe it off, So wipe off all of that gunky paint. Pop your brush in a jar, rub those bristles on the bottom, get some nice movement in there to get that paint out of your brush. And we're actually going to go on to our bike next. So we want to get this brush really clean because it's going to be sitting out for quite a while actually. The next time we're going to use it is when we do our um, basket and even then you don't have to use it. So you'll just want to make sure that it's really clean because you don't want to leave your brushes sitting in your water. The water sucks up the handles and it can actually um, release the glue between your bristles and the heel and the handle. So you'll just want to um, make sure it's really, really clean and then lay it flat to dry. So my bike is going to be purple just because I actually happen to have some stuff sitting around that I need to use. Um, plus, I think it'll go really well with <laughs> what was supposed to be my cream background that turned to yellow, but that's okay. Um, and I'm actually going to add some white to it to make it a lilac. So whenever you are ready, you can move on to um, starting to mix your background color. Now artists, because I can't see you, if you could let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, I know though that both of you are very experienced artists, so um, I know you know how to do this stuff. All right, artists, so let's move on to the bicycle. If you're not there yet, don't worry, you will catch up. Um, so I'm going to use my half inch brush for this just because I love my half inch brush. I can turn it on its side and get a really nice thin line, although it looks like it needs a bit of a trim. And I can turn it on its face to get a nice thick line if I want. So I've made quite a bit of purple for my bicycle. Um, and really when we do this, because we don't have any really thick spots, when you outline first, you may end up, your two lines may be enough to just totally fill it in. We may have time to come back and do a second coat. So what I will tell you is whenever you mix white with your paint, it actually makes a nice cover up and it, um, it makes it so that if you do have to do a second coat, it's not a big deal, like it, it doesn't take very long. Whereas if you just use a plain color from the tube or the jar or whatever, um, it usually requires a second coat no matter what. So um, if you just wanna keep that in mind. So when you use your brush, make sure that it's doing the work for you, that you're not trying to manipulate it, um, meaning that your brush, your paint should always be on the tips of your bristles. Um, your brush should never be thick or wide because then you have paint stuck inside your bristles and your brush won't work for you. And you also want to paint as though you're cutting in. So just because I'm dry up here, actually, no, sorry, we started down here. So I'll start down here. So the first part of our bike down here is the fender. Oops. And you're just gonna kind of take a deep breath. <laughs> You know what, I think for my second coat, I think I'm actually going to add some pink to that because I don't know if I like that purple so much. And that's what I like about acrylic too, is that it does dry, but um, it allows you to, to fix mistakes. I 
I know, and you're probably, so I just thought, you know, why wouldn't we do the wheels first, right? Usually we would, or the tires, I should say. However, because they're going to be black, um, I always do that towards the end because it fills in very nicely and it's very difficult to paint over top of. Yeah, I'm not loving this purple. Maybe I should have just gone with my original pink. So I've just done the front wheel fender. I'm just doing the, I don't know, parts of a bike, the part where the chain, I guess, would be. We're not going to do, to draw in the chain or paint in the chain. We're just going to do this color here. So artist, I am going to have to come back and do a second coat, so. So use the edge of your brush to get that line cut in smoothly and just always follow the contour of your shape the outside lines of your shape So artists, for this, I'm just putting on my first coat. It's my second coat that's really going to sharpen this up. And so my paint is always on the tips of my bristles. And just going very slowly you are going to have the outer edge of your bristle follow the line of your contour. Oh, so down here is tire, so don't paint this part in down here. Well, you can. If black will go over top of pretty much anything. All right. Just follow the contour of your bicycle. Because this is going to go to a point down here, I want to press very lightly with my brush so that it creates a point. So do spread this out because we do want to make sure that we can go back and do a second coat. You don't want to have any lumps or gloops or globs or... pretty easy first coat of the bike is done it does not look beautiful it is not supposed to painting is all about the layers um, and you can't judge your painting until you're finished because then that's when all the layers are on we're gonna go in and next we're going to do some white circles for where we want our flowers to be okay where you want your flowers to be we're going to just paint in the white circles first um, in the original, let me see here, let me go to the chat. Yeah, so there's about, you know, three big ones and then just a couple medium ones here and there. It's entirely up to you. When we do go to paint in the circles, we're not going to be perfect, okay? They're not perfect circles. They're actually more like clouds, but not as fluffy as clouds, if that makes sense. So not quite circles, not quite clouds, somewhere in between. And we're just going to do a white base to start. So um, that will be our next step in our bicycle, just so you know what's coming up next. Uh, we're just gonna go on to add some circle-ish, literally circle-ish 
lines or uh, circles, circle-ish circles above our basket here. So I'm going to start with one kind of in the middle. So I always start with my big ones and then fill in. So I think I want one here. And so when I say circle-ish, I mean kind of like, kind of like a, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm, I'll paint it in and then I'll hold it. So all we're doing is, this is called blocking. And so we're just blocking in where our flowers are going to be. So can you see that circle-ish, right? It's not technically a circle and it's not technically a cloud. So I guess what I would say is start with the circle shape and if it's not a perfect circle, perfect. It's exactly what you want. And you can go as big as you want to go. These don't, have, these, I mean, maybe these are too big. I'm not sure. So we're just blocking in right now. So I'm going to do, so I've got a big one here and then I'm just kind of filling in this other space here. Just above my basket. And yes, we are going to add in greenery. So that will come in. We're just blocking right now. You know what? Mm. No, I'm going to put greenery there, I think. No. I'm just going to do a little one right over top of my bicycle handle. Okay, so it's just blocking. It's literally just laying down white paint where your flowers are going to be. Okay, so start with your biggest one first and then kind of decide. I mean, honestly, your bicycle bouquet could be huge, right? Like you could take it all the way up to there. It's entirely up to you how far you want to go. But I've just, I've put one in right there, right? Actually over top of my handle. I have one right here to just kind of fill in this space. This is my big one that I started with. And then I have a little one over here. And so you're really just kind of filling in space, placing your flowers where you want them to be. When you're done that, we're gonna wipe, rinse, and wipe our brush. And we're actually gonna go back to our bicycle now. So in our bottom left-hand corner, if that's where we started, it should be dry enough, yep, to paint right over top of it. So you always wanna paint in the same order that you did the first time, um, because they will be drier. All right, I am going to add some. What am I gonna add? I'm gonna add some, this is, nope, that's purple. <laughs> I was gonna add some red actually in with my purple. I just wanna pink this up a little bit. So this will be the final coat on your bicycle. So um, yes, you can change your color slightly by adding another primary color to it or even some white. Ooh, it turned into more like a, a plum sort of color. once it lays down on your canvas though, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna actually wipe out my brush because it's getting a little fat and get those bristles smoothed back together. All right, I'm gonna take this brand new purple that I made, hopefully I like it better. <laughs> I'm gonna start in the bottom left hand corner where I started last time. Now you obviously don't have to change your color. If you loved your color the first time, then we are just gonna go right over top. Now, our brush strokes here matter. So the first time they didn't so much, this time we will see them. So you wanna paint the items that will cover up 
So again, basically it's from the back, whatever's underneath first is what you want to paint first. So my fender is underneath my handlebar, or the, the column, the handle steering column, I guess it is. Maybe I should learn parts of the bike. It's like when I did the guitar. Oh yeah, it was just last weekend, wasn't it? Um, I'm like, I have no idea what the parts of the guitar are. So this time you might just want to be a little bit more gentle, um, a little bit more smooth. First time I just plopped it on, you guys probably didn't. We're just adding the second coat onto our bicycle. Outlining this one was almost as difficult as outlining our succulent, almost. The succulent has a pattern, so you just kind of keep following the pattern, but a ton on lines, whereas um, this just has a lot of lines. So. I hope I got them all on your canvases. If not, just make them up. Your bike will look beautiful. So remember your brush strokes should always follow the contour or the outside shape of your piece that you're painting. Like my voice shuts off when my brush is to the canvas, which is kind of pointless, right? But it's just such a relaxing motion. I love the feeling of my brush just gliding across the canvas. So if you did put um, a block here for your flower, just literally paint right around it. And remember, this is a painting, not a photograph. So if your lines are wonky or like this handlebar got a little big on me, that's okay. If your brush starts to, if the paint starts to build up in your bristles, just use the edge of your palette, your plate, whatever you're using and scrape it out. You could rinse your brush, but it works to just scrape it out as well. two tones. Alright, I need to stop fiddling with it. When you start painting over top of wet paint, you have a chance of actually taking off the paint that you've just laid down. I should know better than to go over top again. Um, artists, we are going to come back and add some highlights to our bicycle. So um, you will you will want to have enough of that color left and we're just going to lighten it with some white. And that is going to act as our highlight. Oops. All right, um, I'm going to wipe rinse and wipe my brush off. So my next step after this, just so you know, is to actually go ahead and do the basket. So for the basket, you can use your medium brush if you want to, but I'm going to use my big brush. I want those nice big blocks and it's going to be kind of the same technique that I showed you at first for that first background and we're going to use our big brush so my basket's just going to be gray so I'm going to get some black and some white more white than black I don't think I want it too dark and I am just going to do some hatching across it there is another way you could just simply paint paint it in and then go back and add your basket lines. Um, that's entirely up to you. That is definitely another option. Okay, awesome. So the basket is our next step. So for the basket, um, I am 
Just gonna take some of my white and some of my black, and if you happen to have it on your palette, that's great. But I just have some left in my pods from previous painting workshops. And I'm going to use my big brush. Again, you can use your medium brush if you want to, and I'm going to double dip. So I'm going to get a little bit of black on one corner, more white on the other corner, and I'm just going to do, I hope this works, there we go. Ooh, that turned out way darker than I thought it would. And when I do kind of like a back and forth basket motion, it kind of starts to look a bit like a weep, a little. Now the other thing you can do is you can simply just paint in your, your basket and just draw in the basket lines, paint in the basket lines. That's entirely up to you. I'm just gonna sharpen up my edges here. And don't worry about the top because we're actually going to paint in some green and you're probably hardly even going to see it. I'm just going to do some pure white streaks in here because that's pretty dark. I like that. If you don't like it, that is totally fine. I would just paint it all in and draw in your normal basket, like, if you wanted to. But just do it a quick sketch, right? Like this doesn't, it's your flowers and the bike that are the main aspect of your masterpiece. So I'm done my basket. We're not gonna do a second coat. It's literally just a cross hatch or paint it in and draw in or paint in those uh, basket lines. I am going to wipe rinse and wipe my brush and I'm actually going to go on to the black now because I want to give a little bit of time for my basket to dry. So we're going to move back to the black on the bicycle, which includes the seat, the handlebars, the tires, and we're going to do one coat, but we are going to come back and add some highlights after. So this is really just about laying down the black paint. So what I love about the black, oh, actually what I should say is you could also just do gray if you wanted to. If the black is a little too much, like if it's, whew, uh, you could use a dark gray even. That might look a little bit um, more nice, nicer than just a straight black. But whenever you're ready, you're just going to take your medium or your small brush and I'm going to start at the bottom again because that's where I started last time. And this is where you want to outline very carefully. And then fill in. Now remember, it's a painting, not a photograph. So it's okay if your wheels are wonky. Actually, have you guys ever um, looked up the artist Dom Langstroth? She is Anne Murray's daughter, and I I really love her art because she calls it wonky art, and it is. It's all just um, drawings that she takes from her memory or her scenes or whatever, and makes them crooked on purpose. Um, I love it because it shows that it's okay that your lines don't have to be straight to make beautiful art, but she of course is very thoughtful about it. And um, creates a beautiful pattern in her pieces. So again, you don't have to use straight black. You could use a dark gray if you wanted to. So outline first and then fill in.
So again, what I love about the black paint is it just covers so nicely. You shouldn't need to come back and do a second coat, but of course you can if you want to. So I've done my tires and I'm just going to come up here and do my bike seat. So if you want, I mean you can take your bike seat and your tire and anything else around the side of your canvas if you want to. So outline first and then fill in. Again, follow the contour, the outline um, shape of your, the piece that you're painting. And actually, artists, while we still have wet paint going on down here, we're actually, let's do our highlights now because it's kind of nice to get them a little bit smudgy. If you want it to be pure white, then wait for this step. However, when you're done doing the black, you can actually go ahead and do your highlights quite quickly after. Um, that way, they're not pure white. They're going to be a little bit of gray. So I am going to... White prints and white my brush because I have quite a bit of black on here. And um, since my paint is wet, the white will smudge in with the black to make a gray. So when you're done painting in your black pieces, um, the highlights are really going to highlight the contour or the shape of, say, your tire, for example. So I've just taken some pure white on my brush, and I'm just following the contour or the outer edge of my tire, and I'm smudging it in to create a little bit of a highlight there. So here, I'll show you again down here. Um, you can do it down here if you want to, you don't have to. So I'm just going to take some white and follow the outer edge and smudge it in as much as I want to. I'm just going to turn my brush to get a thinner line up here. And all it does is it just gives your, your, um, tire a little bit of shape and you can smudge those lines in or blend those lines in a little bit so it's not so prominent. Ooh, that's probably a little too much white. Sorry, that was really white. So I'm just going to put some more black in there to blend it in a bit. And all it does, artists, is it just gives your object a little bit of shape. So same up here with the seat. Um, you might want to think of it where almost like a V. And then a little hat, <laughs> I guess. A V and then, um, you know, come around to your sides here. If it gets to be too light, just add some more black. But I've just got it up here on the seat part. And you can smudge that in as much as you want. Same with the handlebars, probably just up top here. Hardly any white at all. Just smudge those highlights in. We'll come back and we'll do highlights on the bike, but I just wanted to do that while this was still wet. So again, I just added some white here um, at the top of the 
tire and just smudged it in. I added in some white here on the side, right? And when you smudge it, you can hardly see it, but it's enough to just give your tire a little bit of shape or your bicycle seat a little bit of shape. Your handlebars. So, artists, our next step is going to be to add some green around our flowers. Then we're going to come back and add some highlights on our bicycle. And then we're going to come back and do our flowers. We also have to do our spokes towards the end, too. Um, actually, so the little dot circle down at the bottom, that, I actually forgot about it. It could be your bicycle color, but it could also be a gray just because of your spokes. I'm just going to paint in my little tiny dots down here, just a, a gray color. And it doesn't even have to attach, right? This is a, this is a painting, not a photograph. When we go to do our spikes, at, or our spikes, our spokes at the end, um, that'll be the last step, but it'll kind of lead towards that bottom circle. So, for our green leaves, um, you can make green simply by adding blue and yellow together. Um, I've got a little bit of phthalo green, it's the really dark green, but it's a little too dark for me. So I'm actually going to take some of my yellow, scoop it onto my palette here. Ooh. So remember when I said clean your brush really well? Apparently I didn't listen. I have some black in there. So when you have black in your paint, the only color it ever makes is gray. That's it. So if I have it in my yellow, I'm going to get a yellow gray. All right. So clean brush. I'm going to add some of that green right beside my yellow. You can see that there, right beside my green and my yellow, right beside each other. And I'm just going to pull them together until I get the green that I want my leaves to be. Now you can use your medium brush for this or even your small brush for this. I think I might move to my small brush actually. Depends how small your small brush is, right? and make your green however you want your green to be. I like that green, I think that's a good green. So when you're ready, when you've got the green that you want, with your small brush, you are just going to fill, I know, just, you're going to fill in the parts between your flowers. Now if you want to draw in flower or leaf shapes and do that you can but maybe you literally just want to tap in your green I'm gonna tap in between my flowers here just so that it's not my background And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is this is greenery. It's not not necessarily smooth. Maybe I want to draw in a little leaf shape here. You know, and if you do want the greenery to come down your basket, you can do that. Maybe you want to block it in before you do that. So that's, again, by adding the white. But I don't think I want much down there. You can even add some above your flowers. Oh, my leaves are turning into like ferny flowers or ferny leaves. That's okay. Yeah, I think I like those leaves better. See, that's what happens when you're painting. Something just happens and you're like, yeah, that's how it should look. Yeah, I don't want smooth leaves. But I'm gonna put green all around, pretty much all around my, 
eh, maybe that's a little much. Do you have Missy my leaves are? I think it's just almost like grass is sticking out at this point. I'm okay with that though, I like that actually. So artists, you decide when you're done with your green, how far it's gonna go down, how much you're gonna add. Definitely fill in between your flowers. You're gonna give that a little bit of time to dry, I think, because I mine got pretty wet. I'm going to, um, after I do that, I'm going to, I'm sorry, getting in my painting zone. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, we're going to do the highlights on our bicycle and then we are going to actually, let's do the spokes after the highlights and then we'll come back and we'll do our flowers very, very last. Okay, so just kind of fill in that area with as much green as you want it to have. It can look grassy like that. I think CJ's original had more smooth. Let's look here. Oh no, hers were kind of messy too. She didn't go all the way around though on hers. It's entirely up to you. This is your piece. You decide. Maybe I want to take it around here now. Ooh, this is getting really big, right? <laughs> so whenever you're happy with it, just stop because it will be inevitable. You will do something crazy that you won't like. So once it's good, just stop. When you're done your green, we're going to give some time for that to dry. We are going to move on to our highlights on our bicycle and um, the spokes in between that front wheel there. So you may want to use your smallest brush for this. Um, I'm using my smallest brush is my square shaped brush and with the bristles all together, it uh, makes a really nice thin line if I ever wanted to. It's lovely. So our next step artist with our bicycle adding the highlights. We're going to use the same color that we used for our bike, but we are going to add a little bit of white to it. So when I say a little bit, I really mean a little bit because you can always add more, but you can't really ever take white away. So Start with a little bit of white. Maybe that's too much. We'll find out. To make just a lighter tint of your bicycle color when you're ready. And I'm just gonna use my smaller brush for this. And again, you can always add more white. Really tough to take white away. So artists, just give us the time check. We are just over 12, so we're just over an hour since we started. Um, I predict that we're going to be at least another 15 minutes, okay? Just to, so you know. All right. So artists, when you're ready, you are going to make a lighter color of your bicycle, and we are going to add some highlights in here. So when we do this, let's think about where the light would hit our fender, so our, or our bicycle at all, really. And usually it's the top curvy lines, right? It's not really underneath anything. So all of your highlight lines are going to follow kind of the top. You can't really see that very well, sorry. And it doesn't even have to go all that way. Kind of the top contour edge of any part of your bicycle. So back here, I mean it's not really going to be in a lot of spots. I'm talking about the top of the back fender, the top of your bicycle handle, the top of the bar that comes down to connect the frame, not really under your bike seat because that's mostly hidden. You're probably going to have some highlight on the front fender here. 
And if you wanted to separate this bicycle frame a little bit, you could add just a few highlight streaks in there as well. The other part that is lighter in this original masterpiece is inside of this where the chain is. You don't have to do this, but you can if you want to. So just think about where your highlights are going to be first and then come back and add any touch-ups. Maybe the highlights kind of go off the front of my bicycle here. Yeah, that looks better. Ooh, okay, too much, stop. You'll know when it's too much. All right, I'm going to stop with those highlights. Um, so again, I just did the top of the fender and the front and kind of took it around. I actually did this side of whatever the steering column, I guess it would be. I did the top of the handlebar. I did a little bit of the front of the steering column. I did the top of the connector. <laughs> I don't know what it is, this middle one here. Uh, I did the top of the back fender here, and then I just did inside of the chain, where it holds the chain, um, just because that's how the original one had it. Entirely up to you. We're not gonna put in pedals, we're gonna pretend like this bike doesn't have pedals. It's okay, just a, just a painting, right? And then we're going to do our spokes next. So I'm still going to use my small brush for my spokes. And they're actually going, I'm going to make a, a darker gray. Uh, for you guys to add your highlights to your bicycle. And then when you're done that, you're going to wipe, rinse and wipe your brush because you want to get that highlight color out. And I'm just going to make a really light gray for my spokes. Like, I don't really want my spokes to be seen, honestly. So a really light gray consists of way more white and the tiniest amount of black. And you won't even really need a lot of it. Whatever you do, you want to make sure that your bristles are together for this one or that you've got a pointy round brush or that your bristles are really together on a square brush. Once you're done the highlight on your bicycle, you're going to wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush. And my spokes are going to be gray, and I'm not even, like, this is not meant to be perfect, okay? This is meant to be just uh, an indication that there are spokes there. So I've, I've got a really light gray on my brush. Got my bristles together really well so I can get a really nice thin line. And I'm not even gonna make sure that they touch. I actually don't even want them to touch. Just a really quick. Okay, so don't even worry about it. I think I would start further apart first and then add any smaller ones in after. So don't even, like, they're not even touching. It's just a quick sketch. 
Okay. Remember, once you like it, stop. <laughs> You can add as many of those as you want to or as few, it's entirely up to you. You don't even have to add them at all if you don't want to. So we're gonna do the same thing in the back one. Now, you probably noticed you don't have um, a tire back here. So actually, I'm just gonna check. Yeah, not really. So we're just going to pretend that the center of the back wheel is back here somewhere. And so you just want all of your spokes to kind of be in the same angle. And you're just going to quickly put them in. I probably could have done that one that way a little bit. Oh, just leave it, right? Don't play with it once it's done. Okay. So you've got your spokes in the front, you've got your spokes in the back. Now the other thing I just noticed that the original one has is um, there's actually, if you want, CJ for some reason did a color inside the wheel you could also do a white wash if you want, like just a white stripe. If your black is dry and you feel comfortable doing that, you can. I noticed on her original one, she did go and add kind of like a, a dark blue in there. Um, you could also just go around with a, a gray again. That would look really nice. So I will leave that up to you and you can do that after you add your spike, your spokes, holy crow, your spokes. Um, It'll look good after actually because if even if it does touch your spokes, it'll look a little bit finished. So if you do want to go ahead, well, I'll just show you. If you do want to go ahead and add your a gray wash wall kind of around your tire. You can if you want to. It's not something you have to do, but if you like that better, then go for it. I'm not gonna do it in the back tire, that's just a little too much. Yeah, that looks good. Is uh, for our flowers. So for the flowers, you want to have your main color, and then we are going to have some white because we're going to lighten each step up, and we're going to do three kind of coats. So the first coat is going to cover the entire flower. The second coat, we're going to add just, honestly, they're squiggles. <laughs> Don't worry. And then the third, we're going to add lighter squiggles in the alternating places. So I am going to do pink flowers. So I want my main color to be actually quite red, like more of a darker pink. So I'm gonna grab quite a bit of that red and a little bit of my white to start. Now again, you can always add more white. So if it's not quite as light as you want it to be, just start with a little bit and add a little bit more. Oh, that's pretty, I like that. And when you're ready, sorry, I just have too much water in my brush there. You're literally just going to fill your first coat of flour in. And it's okay if you have another color smudged in there. It's kind of pretty, right? So your first coat will cover the entire flower. 
And remember, your edges don't have to be perfect. You just want to layer this in. Spread out your paint though so, the, so that it dries. Right? This will just complete the whole thing, really. So I'm using my medium brush and with my pink that I've made, that's still pretty, pretty dark, I'm using my medium brush to fill in my circle-ish shapes. Don't even worry about it being perfect because we're going to add other layers to this. So I know this might sound silly, but maybe um, clean out your brush a little bit. You could even wipe and rinse it if you want. Mine was just getting really kind of big with the paint stuck in the bristles. So my next step after this, so after I've painted this in, is I need to go to a lighter tint of my original flower color. So the way I do that is by just adding the smallest bit of white. Again, I can always add more. You can't take it away though. So it should be distinguishable that it's a different, it's a different tint for sure. or else it won't show up very well. So I'm just taking my original flower color and I'm adding some white. Ooh, that might have been too much. Yeah, oh well. See all this stuff I tell you guys not to do and then I just go ahead and do it. So I'm just scraping out my paint on the side of my beautiful paper plate palette here. All right, so when you're ready, you are going to, well, I'm going to use my medium brush. You can move to your smaller brush if you want to. And we're literally just adding in strokes that follow the contour or the outside shape of our flower. You can, if you want to just, if you want to start in the middle, you can. And they're just brush strokes. That's all they are. Brush strokes that follow the contour of our flower. Don't worry, it's not going to look perfect yet. We still need to do another coat of a lighter tint. Sorry, that one was so really wet. I'm just gonna pile on that paint there. Okay. Still not done, because we need to go even lighter than that for our final one. So that first color that you painted, you might not, not even really see it by the end. I'm gonna add a lot more white this time. And we're just gonna do that again. Be generous with your paint, with your strokes. Make sure you have lots of paint on the tips of your bristles. Now this time when you add in your lighter color, you are not going to go over top of where you went with your previous tint. You're going to go over top of the other spots. You can even add a stroke right in the middle. So 
So all of my strokes follow the contour or the outside shape of my flower. Again, be generous. Make sure you have lots of paint on the tips of your bristles because you will start taking paint off of the original one if you don't. So lots of paint on the tips of your bristles. 